Hi, welcome to this lesson on word equations. The question of the day, what is the charge of copper in copper two chloride and how do you know? That's a picture of copper two chloride. Isn't it beautiful? I love that color. In chemical word equations, we're just using words instead of a typical chemical formula. It kind of is how you would verbally read it. So in order to like work with these equations, balance them, really like see what's going on, you'll have to take the words and convert them into chemical formulas. So here we have copper two chloride decomposes into its elements. And the question is, what are the coefficients? How do we balance this equation? There are a few things to look out for when you have word equations. And a lot of the time you will get a reaction type in your word equation. So in this case, we have copper two chloride decomposes into its elements. So here we're getting the hint that we're gonna break something apart. The copper two chloride is going to be broken apart. In a synthesis reaction, you may get the keywords make or form. Um, something is synthesized. That could also um, work. But if it says like copper two chloride is synthesized, then that means copper two chloride would be the product, not the reactant. So it's important to like really dig in and try to figure out which side of the reaction you're working with. But these um, reaction types can give you a pretty good hint as to what your reaction is supposed to look like. Another thing to be mindful of when it comes to these word equations are the diatomic elements. I find that a lot of students mess this up um, and that's okay because you're learning. But we have copper two chloride, meaning that chlorine on its own is a diatomic element. These are the other diatomic elements. So anytime they're not bonded, um, they're gonna take on this form. That's because these elements are uh, really high electronegativity and really just need another electron or two or three to fill their valence shells. And they will uh, covalently bond with another atom of the same type in order to do that. I've always told my students to remember Brinkelhoff, um, which is like if you took all the element symbols and put them together, it would spell that made up word Brinkelhoff. Um, some teachers will say Hoff Brinkel. And then you also have... Um, if you look at the periodic table, nitrogen is number seven. And if you like highlight the diatomic elements or just run over it with your finger, they all make a seven starting with element number seven. So that would be nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And then you just have to remember to grab hydrogen over from the left side of the table. Now, when you have ionic compounds, it's important to remember that you need to crisscross or rather uncrisscross in order to get some charges. So here we have copper two chloride. Um, this two, the Roman numeral two is telling us the charge of the copper. So in this case, I'm gonna take copper plus two and crisscross it with chlorine minus one to get me the chemical formula CuCl2. And then that is going to decompose into its elements, copper and chlorine, but don't forget chlorine is a diatomic. So in this example, we're working with an ionic compound. And I know that for a few reasons. Number one, copper I know is a metal and chlorine is a non-metal. So there is just ionic bonding. I also have a Roman numeral in my chemical name, which will only happen if there are ionic bonds, which means I'm allowed to crisscross. The Roman numeral is going to tell me the metal's charge. So it's definitely easier. You don't even have to use a periodic table to get copper's charge. Um, if this were a covalent compound, then I would have prefixes to indicate the number of atoms. And this is why understanding naming is so important because from a name, you can figure out what type of bonds you have. So if you have ionic bonds, you are allowed to crisscross, but if you have covalent bonds, you are not allowed to crisscross. So our final answer here is CuCl2 yields Cu plus Cl2. I hope that you found these really easy. A lot of the time, you're just going to have to rely on your knowledge of naming compounds and then a little bit on the types of chemical reactions. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next one, and I'll see you there. Bye.